Uh, welcome to this video on conspiracy theories. Um, conspiracy theories are getting more and more uh, popular, so I would like to provide people with a bit of a guide and an instruction to this, and what is for many people still a new area of spirituality and uh, social activity to explore. <clears throat> so, well, it is true that there are evil powers we, uh, which might be able to corrupt our planet. We need not seek for them beyond the stars or in the depths of the seas or in other dimensions. Uh, we can find our presence right here, in our boardrooms, but also in our own minds and hearts. However, to alter the situation requires strategy, operational planning and tactical skill. Just knowing about it won't make a difference. Uh, Sun Tzu already wrote ages ago that to be able to be successful you need to know yourself and you need to know your enemy as well as the situation you both find yourself in for you to be able to take wise action which will lead to success. So um, in light of this I have uh, seven little basic tips for people who are entering into this uh, area. <clears throat> so let me start with what we need to realize about them, whoever they are. So there's many different theories of them being from other planets or groups like Freemasons, Illuminati, um, uh, Builder Bear groups, all kinds of like, shadowy organizations. So what we need to realize, uh, point one, is the first thing any group with power will do is to lead the opposition against themselves. If they would allow their true enemies to unite against them, eventually their might might be overthrown. So it is wise for them to allow agent provocateurs to initiate the resistance movement. So they know not only their enemies' plans, but they can actually use these resistance movements to further their own agenda, their own plans. Therefore, any organized resistance is very likely to contain double agents. Some resistance movements are even totally composed of double agents. This way people think that the war is being fought and change is being affected. And those who would rise up are thus lulled in a false sense of achievement and security, leaving it to the professionals or fighting to defeat their enemies. It's also a very easy method for them to identify their enemies, since they will seek to find, join and support these organizations. So they uh, get their own hidden enemies to work very hard at revealing themselves through the resistance groups they themselves set up. As it may be concluded that searching the internet for information on conspiracies will turn up at best disinformation and at worst allow them to know you, your intentions of opposing them. So the cherry on the pie is that by operating in this manner those of their enemies who realize the deception and traps are still prevented from uniting out of fear and if united, they will be mired in mutual distrust, preventing their striking outward as a united force. So my advice is to operate in very small, untraceable, self-contained cells. To grow, split the cell when it becomes too big and sever all contacts as much as possible so any contamination will not spread through your resistance organization. Corrupted cells will eventually manifest and pop up because double agents will seek to infiltrate your resistance. But due to the structure, they will be prevented from affecting the whole too much. Any centralization will lead to greater vulnerability. Um, double agents will gravitate towards command and control centers. So this tendency can be used actually to uh, to uh, bait them and to trap them when they enter your resistance movement. So the second piece of advice I would like to uh, give on uh, them 
um, basically comes from, from Clausewitz's uh, book on war. Uh, his advice on warfare um, uh, results in that any group will seek to impart a maximum friction on opposing groups. This means that the cost and difficulty for the opposition to act in a way which is not in line with what they wish us to, go, to do will be maximized. So they make it hard, difficult, costly to oppose them. So to affect the opposition, some influence on the opposition's environment and or actions is instrumental. So any group will seek to attain a position of influence over their opposition. This is the cost of power and it forces those in power to focus at least some of their resources into maintaining their advantage and makes their actions somewhat predictable. In our modern society such influence translates into legislative power, executive power, control over the media and control over information. These areas in our society are thus battlegrounds in which success is imperative to minimize the friction you're going to encounter. Without success on these battlegrounds, any action is at best very costly and at worst self-defeating. My advice is rather than to try to wrest control from each other, we should strive for a level playing field, ensuring a dynamic society. I would suggest minimizing the friction which can be inflicted upon any party. So it is very important in a way to have a very liberal constitution, a liberal society, so that the amount of influence which can be applied on any group or any individual is also minimized. So the third piece of advice on how they are likely to act. By breaking morale, you can immobilize your enemy. People being herd animals, naturally gravitate towards leaders, inspirators and idols. This tendency makes them forget what greater collective purpose they should serve. By striking at such a rallying point, people can be demoralized. These strikes can be done by disillusioning the followers through smear campaigns, casting doubts, defeating their hero, imprisoning them or suing them or by disabling their leaders by forcing them to fight contenders for the same position. When you notice that in the battlegrounds which are under control of your enemies an attack is being made upon someone, it is likely to be either your co-combatant or even ally or a double agent who is in this way being helped into a position of power within the enemy camp. So my piece of advice on this is that the messenger is unimportant. At best they are a catalyst which inspires you to act. At worst they can find your actions and draw you away from your ideals and into a cult of personality. Never be dependent upon anyone else for your ability to fight. Ideals should be served, not people. So my fourth piece of advice is a bit of general knowledge about conspiracy theories in general. Uh, any set of facts can be linked by a theory. Although such fact-based theories seemingly must be true, because the facts prove it, the opposite is the case. This is circular reasoning proving nothing, except that the theory is internally consistent. A truly good theory has a minimal amount of unproven assumptions can be falsified. A falsification means that there should be experimental methods which could indicate the incorrectness of the theory. And it can be extrapolated into testable predictions. A theory which does not conform to these standards is not necessarily false, but such theories have no more use than any other fantasy when it comes to creating an internal model of the world. So my advice here is any theory which does not lead to constructive action with a measurable result is at best a distraction, at worst a corruption of your own intent.
Try to keep your theories as simple as possible and refine them by experimentation. Theory should be the basis upon which technology can be founded. If theory does not help you to act with greater efficiency and greater effectiveness, the theory is worthless. So then I have three pieces of advice on ourselves as conspiracy theorists. So the first thing to realize is that paranoia is a self-perpetuating misinterpretation of stimuli we receive from our environment. And if we go into a state of paranoia, all our energy and intention becomes consumed by a desire for self-protection, to separate ourselves from the enemy, to hide from the enemy, um, to save ourselves. Because of this, we stop focusing outwards. And thus, by fear, we are immobilized and give control over the world over to our enemies. So my advice here is to accept that death is unavoidable, but also to realize that the spirit is indestructible. Fighting will always cause some harm, even with the best of skill and intentions. If you are unwilling to risk harm, don't try to be a warrior, but support those who are warriors and let them protect you, let them fight for you, let them fight for your ideals and support them in creating a better world. It is much more efficient and effective than wasting all your money, energy and focus on just yourself. Because your life will end and since your spirit is indestructible you'll be born in the world which is controlled even more by your enemies if you don't take action. Sixth piece of advice is that we tend to be blinded by our own motives or our own shadow side, our own sins, which we ascribe to others, even to our enemies. We tend to see them as humans, driven by basic instincts such as greed, lust, pride, anger. People who are controlled solely by such simple drives are not truly dangerous. And these selfish tendencies are not the traits which make them dangerous. We have to realize that the enemies, which are truly a danger to us, are so because they are superior to us. They are more intelligent, more knowledgeable, more powerful, more influential, more inspired, more committed and more idealistic. None of us want to see their enemy as superior to themselves. This is uncomfortable. Rather, we prefer to see them as sick or deranged or inferior or corrupted. However, if this, if this were true, we ourselves would be in positions of power, not anyone else. The very important trick is to focus on yourself and your duty. Not to allow yourself to be distracted from your own path by your enemy, but still to realize what the reality of the situation is. So my advice on this is, no matter how powerful your enemy is, everything is always in motion. And success is not always a question of power or skill. Often it's due to luck, guidance, seizing the initiative. And you may not be able to affect your enemy directly, but you can affect yourself, you can affect your surroundings. And this is where your first duty lies, in doing what you can do right now not in dreams of conquest or plans <laughs> and theories. So the last piece of advice I would like to, uh, to give to you on this subject in this video is to realize that we are all pawns. Our enemies are pawns, but we ourselves are also pawns. Humanity, our planet, our solar system, our entire cosmos is in a process of evolution and these cosmic powers which drive evolution manifest themselves as ideals, as deities, as spirits, as guides, as people, as organizations. And sometimes this evolution comes at a terrible cost. But the evolution itself is ultimately unavoidable, even though it can be three steps forward, two steps back at times. And it 
is the process of evolution which must be served, and it can be best served by each of us playing their assigned roles. And if you're wondering on what to do or how to decide, try following the impulses, both in yourself and in society, back to their source as much as possible. This way you can truly find the grey eminences which are influencing our fate as human beings, as humanity and as a planet. So my advice here would be to try to find those who are very alike to you in spirit. Um, because when those who are alike congregate, higher powers tend to manifest themselves more strongly, since with the same effort of coming to us, of speaking to us, they can influence many people. And this is the best way both to find your own guidance, but also how to, to determine how other people are being guided. But you should beware that visiting groups and places of power is not without danger of detection and also of corruption. By realizing the powers behind the forms, you will see that many fights are just staged performances to allow the group as a whole more influence on the world stage. Different sides in many conflicts are actually united in their effort to change the energetic and societal structure of our world. So I hope this will help you in conspiracy land to be safe, to be effective and not to waste your time and effort nor those of other people by wild goose chases and unfounded assumptions. Good luck in changing the world.